Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. I'm going to relay four messages for you, and then we're going to pull out the spread and talk about the energies for the month of July, okay? So first off, um, the past few months, and I would say, you know, since uh, April, April, May, June, okay? Um, I do feel like a lot of you have been in a situation where you've had to really uh, dive deep regarding your where you where you have been some of the things that you've done in the past whether or not they were serving your greater purpose whether or not they were allowing you to grow and in some situations i feel like you're reflecting back on you know regrets things that you should have done differently things that you know didn't go the way you want and you're trying to extract lessons from it so rather than you know mulling over situations what could have been what should have happened I feel like you're drawing within and you're taking away the important lessons, you know, and I feel a lot of you are kind of telling yourself things happen for a reason. What was I supposed to learn from that one experience? So rather than operating from a space where you're just like, it's not me, it was all their fault. I feel like you're taking ownership of the experience. You're taking ownership of, you know, what was I supposed to learn? And learning this lesson, having lived through it, having gone through it, how can I become a better person in the future so I don't land myself in this same predicament, okay? So owning up to things, I feel like that has happened for you the past, um, since April. And so moving forward, we have a lot of good things that are trying to come in for you. So the first message then that I have out here is I feel like your workflow, your financial situation is greatly, greatly enhancing. So I do see a lot of people coming to you, soliciting you. Do you want to do this? Do you want to get involved with this? Do you want to work with this investor? Do you want to, you know, join our company, join our team? So I do see, you know, especially for those uh, who are networking, branching out, looking at um, other income generating opportunities, especially for those of you in the creative industry, singers, actors. And um, I see models, singer, actors, models, like people in the public limelight and people who work in the very public sphere. Um, singer actors uh, models and i'm also seeing like painters uh, photographers a lot of creative types and i'm also sensing like you know if you've been reaching out kind of like extending your tentacles outwards to see what else is available who you can link yourself up with who you can collaborate with this is the month where you're getting a lot of positive reception and a lot of people want you to join their team um, i'm also feeling as well so that um, I'm also feeling the workload is going to be a little bit heavy this month. You're in really high demand. There are a lot of people you got to meet. There are a lot of clients you got to call back. There are a lot of um, traveling as well. Like I feel local travel or even international travel for some of you. But I see you scrambling a lot. So just make sure you um, pack well. So that means, you know, have like a, a list before you start throwing things in the suitcase so that you don't forget. Make sure you get adequate sleep. Make sure you are staying very hydrated because you know it is the summer months in the northern hemisphere is really hot. And so you need to just, you know, monitor your your whatever you're putting in your body, okay? It's very important. Um, make sure you get a lot of water, a lot of liquids, okay? Make sure you stay hydrated. Second message that I have out here is I feel like the work situation is really, really, um, it's picking up. So that means you might not have as much leisure activity anymore. I feel a lot of people um, doing, throwing a lot of overtime at work. And I'm also seeing some people um, constantly on the go and you might not have time to reach out to friends anymore some friends they might have events you know like anniversaries weddings uh, birthday parties and their invitations are getting lost in your inbox for example and you you just miss the date and I feel like you're gonna have to then explain to them you know um, just make sure you check your emails check your inboxes check your messaging devices 
so that these invitations are not getting lost because I feel like they're coming from important friends that have been there for you and they they gave you a reminder right and it's 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 getting piled in it's getting piled on and it's getting lost and then all of a sudden you're just like wait a minute i haven't heard from this person in a really long time then you find out they went through that major celebration and you were just like but i wasn't invited i feel like you were invited it's just the invitation got lost because in the scramble you know of the everyday event of your work okay so be careful about that um don't prematurely burn bridges there's a reason for everything okay um, so that is the second message. Uh, the third message that I have out here, and um, this is going to be a little bit more personal, is what I'm sensing for you. I feel like a lot of you are really struggling to find a sense of rootedness, okay? Like a sense of home, a sense of belonging. Um, it's, it's almost like I feel like physically you are very, very tired. You're very tired. And traveling and you know meeting a bunch of new people it's really exciting and fun but i feel like for some of you you have this need to want to settle down you have a need to want to have a place to call home a place where you can unpack your clothes and you know kick off your shoes and just rest and share that space with another person as well so i feel like you're at a point where where physically you're tired and you do want to set down roots you do want to start owning property. You don't want to run away from these responsibilities anymore because you're ready right now to have a lot more stability and consistency in your home environment, okay? Um, so I feel like that energy is going to be uh, tugging at your heartstrings throughout this month. The last message that I have out here is... Um, they're saying like life is calling you, you know, your power to achieve a lot of financial wealth, your income generating opportunities are opening up. Life is calling. So like adventure, life is calling. So you might have, you know, new opportunities um, to do new things, to travel as well, to take on a job that you've really wanted, right? And you're fearful about having to leave everybody behind. You're fearful about okay, I have to move again, I have to relocate to a new city, I have to make friends all over again, I have to find out where the grocery store is, where the post office is, I have to do it all over again, and I'm, I'm too tired for this. But the energy is there nonetheless, because I feel like a lot of you are, um, you're looking for adventure, you're looking for new stimulation. And you've been manifesting it in, calling it in this whole time. And now it's actually there. You're starting to get cold feet. Okay. So just be aware of that energy. Just be really aware of the intentions you're sending out. And be careful what you wish for. Because I feel like whatever you're sending out, whatever you're trying to manifest and, and, and create for yourself, it's coming back in. And when it gets back in and you've been spending so much time, energy, manifesting it, you can't just really shut the door on it, right? It's still going to be there. And so making sure that your intentions are set right, I feel that's really important for you guys, Gemini. Okay? So for example, if you're looking for a stable relationship partner, but you're dating the types that are not emotionally, financially, or even physically you know like in, in whatever way they're not ready then you're wasting the energy and you need to redirect that energy to give you what you want okay so intention setting being very clear that you as the sign of the twins that your energy is both sides are working in accordance with one another to manifest the right things okay and and not get cold feet not talk yourself out of it when the right things are coming in for you okay so first of all let me talk about this because this came out very very strongly in the center of the spread we have here the star <clears throat> and the star basically means a lot of deep rooted spiritual healing uh, needs to happen for this month and a lot of the times deep rooted spiritual healing can be very very uncomfortable it forces us to examine to really sit down and with ourselves and, and you know in a quiet environment to really sift through a lot of the things that have hurt us in the past 
a lot of the things that we have done to hurt ourselves, hurt other people. And so this is a really, I feel like, you know, on the one hand, there's a lot of work that you have to do. There's a lot of responsibilities that you're taking on. A lot of like activities that you're trying to hold on to and you're also waiting for them to pay out. You're waiting for new opportunities. This is a card usually about opportunities for travel, okay? Looking at the horizon, thinking about what is our life going to be like if we live somewhere else, if our entire life experience have been different. And I feel like longing for something that is a little bit more out of reach, it might or might not come in for you, but you're still longing for it. You're still very fixed in it and you have like multiple things, three, at least three things that you're waiting on, three job offers three collaborators, three opportunities for travel, three uh, situations that you're waiting on. So I feel like your energy is devoted to many, many, many things. And so with this busy time of the year, I feel like you have a lot of work, you have a lot of projects that you're taking on. You might be shifting from one location to the next. You know, you're not really sure what your schedule is going to look like the next week. You're not really sure where you're going to be the next month. And so there's a lot of instability here. I feel like in a way you thrive really well in this because, you know, you're a very buoyant type of sign. You can quickly change your priorities. You can shift your schedule. You can, you know, move around quite a bit without it being disruptive to you. But I feel there's a deep element here of why are you distracting yourself with a lot of things? Are there things that you need to do or things that you need to to really, you know, look at, are you distracting yourself with all of this so you don't have to do this inner work, okay? So that's the first thing for, for those of you who have been going through that, you know, uh, April, May, June time frame where you really have to sit still with yourself and try to flush out, you know, what have I done in the past? Are these things serving me? And uh, sifting through those uncomfortable, awkward situations from the past and whether or not, you know, it's, um, whether or not it's rep they're representative of the person that you want to portray to the world. Like, how have you done things that were good? And what are some of the things that you did that you're not really proud of? So I feel like there is an element here about you running away from some things that, that made you feel uncomfortable, some things that you didn't want to put in the work to examine or you didn't want to put in the time or you ran away from it and you didn't want to take in the time because it's uncomfortable. So they're saying that these things need to be examined because some major deep healing is going to happen for you for this month. And this is um, the month where, you know, we are in the sun sign of uh, cancer. And I feel because it's the middle of the year, this energy in Cancer is for us to really do some type of spiritual purging, okay? January, traditionally, it, it does begin with, you know, setting intention because Capricorns are very good at um, laying down structure, laying down goals, and thinking about how to reach these things. It's all about, you know, looking at the past, like, what have we done so far this entire year? What are we trying to achieve the next six months? And what are some things that we're doing that's hurting us or hurting people around us? So I feel like there's some major deep spiritual kind of like awakening that's happening for many of you. Um, the last thing that I want to mention with this card here, especially, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling this energy here about you doing things or, you know, sort of, so let me talk about recreational things, okay? This is a card involved with, you know, gossip. It deals with people who might, um, who, who clump together, not because of the meaningful conversation, the, the life experiences. They're not really sharing with each other or they don't have a common ground when it comes to enlightened values. They're, they're, they clump themselves together because, you know, they might have like a, a, a common interest or a hobby or a pastime that might not be good for them. Okay, so one thing that does come up with this card is like a bunch of people getting together just to get drunk. And then when they're, they're not drunk, they, the conversation runs out, right? And, and we've all had people like that. We've always all been in this type of a situation. 
it's sort of like without the alcohol, without the drugs, what do we really have in common with the other person? So I feel like this is a month, it might be good for you guys to really think about this. The groups that you find yourselves in, the activities, the, the recreational activities that you find yourself resorting to or doing. And is it, you know, across the board with all the people that you meet or just a specific group? And if it is with a specific group or a specific individual, you might need to, you know, do some cord cutting to wean them out of your life, okay? Because I feel like this energy is not good for growth. And after you're able to do that, you're going to find some people that are conducive for growth that you can share these conversations with, that you can have, you know, very deep, in-depth, soulful communication with. And the energy is going to be completely different from this. And so it's really important for you to, you know, I, I want to say, know who your friends are, know what you're doing, okay? And I also feel for some of you, you are ascending. Your energy is very strong. It's very clear. And it's, it's very, it, it's like resonating at a very high frequency, high vibration. And so recently, some major new good people have come into your life that you really jive well with. And when you're ascending, when your vibration is, it's a really high, clear frequency, the people that are not good for you, they're naturally going to start to grow, um, to go away. And so you might find that when you communicate with your old groups of people, there's a lot of arguments. There's like lack of agreement, lack of consensus, lack of respect even. And these people are going to naturally fall away from your life. And you might try, you might try to, you know, hang on to them. For others of you, you might have already known this, and this is the month in which you start to accept the reality of it, which is that you can't cling on to this any longer. You have to turn your back. You have to do whatever is, you know, spiritually better for you, okay? And so it's going to feel, you know, this transition is going to feel a little bit awkward. It's going to feel a little bit disorienting. And it's going to require a lot of just self-awareness from your end in order to handle it well. Just really think about, okay, why am I no longer talking to A, B, and C? And really, you know, maintaining that motive, maintaining that sense of purpose. I'm not talking to them, even though I do miss them a little bit, but I'm not talking to them because they bring me down or they're not emotionally supportive or I give and give and give so much of my time and I'm not getting anything back from them or they're gossipy and they're, they're um, low vibrational and they bring me down. They drag down the energy of the group or they drag down my energy or they take from me and I can't have that any longer. So I feel like some very, very deep purging of your friendships, of the things that you do recreationally, are they still good for you? I feel a lot of drinking. I honestly feel that. I'm also seeing like a lot of um, situations where it's, it's like your friends drag you to go to a bar or to go to a club and you're just like bored out of your mind and you're sitting there just going through the motions, hoping the day would end. And yet you, you allow them to drag you every single time. So this is the month where I feel like you're putting your foot down. You're like, I'm not doing that anymore. It doesn't bring me any fun and excitement. I don't want to get dressed up just to go out and flaunt and, you know, just go home and sleep and, and waste the whole night. So your priorities are definitely changing here, Gemini's, which I feel is really, really good for you. Um, one last thing I want to mention, and this is your card right here. Okay, this is um, an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or a Libra, but this is your card. And uh, what this card usually denote here, setting boundaries, being very clear about our expectations, and, you know, weeding some people out of our lives. If somebody is coming in, presenting you with some type of, uh, I, I want to say like a BS story, you're going to be very quick to cut them off, okay? And so... What I feel happening for this month, and especially, especially for some of you, this, what I feel is overall protecting your energy level, okay? 
So that means、um, not helping people who are just taking up a lot of your time, a lot of your energy, and they don't want to do the work for themselves. And then on the other end is、um, giving your energy away to people who have boundary issues. Okay, so that means. They repeatedly overextend themselves and ask you to do things that are not appropriate for you. It's, it's just not appropriate for them to ask you in that manner. You might like have an acquaintance that asks if they can, you know, stay with you for five weeks. So that's not appropriate, right? And so this is a card about you know saying no, learning to say no, protecting what's yours, protecting the people that are dear to you, that see you in a different light, that see that wants you to improve. And then cutting off the people that are just raining on your parade, taking your energy.、Um, I feel like, especially for some of you who are doing any type of healing work, or any type of energetic work, or any type of readings, even. So if you have, you know, your sun, moon, or rising in、uh, Gemini's, and you're you're watching this, and it resonates with you. I would strongly urge you to do some type of spiritual cleansing because I feel like you're accumulating, you're accumulating a lot of negative、um, of, of people's energies, and people's energies allows us to sympathize, right? Because it allows us to align ourselves energetically on their energy level. So a lot of the times we have to lower our energy or our our vibration. To allow us to empathically connect to another person that's dealing with some hardships in their lives, where they feel very stuck, and at the end of the reading, we have to release their energy so that we can bounce back, right? And I feel like some of you are getting lost in it. You're you're getting you're doing it, but you're not disconnecting from that energy stream of your clients. And it would be in your best interest to disconnect because I feel like you're carrying other people's energies. And you're operating from a space where you feel really physically tired all the time, and you're feeling like it's hard for you to focus on your everyday activities. It's hard for you to like you. You feel very muddled, like you're walking through a fog, and you feel very low vibrational, like you're tired all the time. And especially if your your neck, the base of your neck, if there are、um, pains or if there's pressure. And then, if there's soreness and you know, just like、uh, knots all over your back, I feel like that's you taking on the energies of other people unawares, and、um, carrying the weight of that. So it makes you feel really, really tired. If that is the case, do some chakra realignment, do some Reiki healing, and、uh, try your best as well. To disconnect yourself after readings, okay? That's going to be really important if you are doing reading or you're doing Reiki or you're doing some type of spiritual healing. And then also for those of you in the medical profession, doctors, even mental health specialists,、um, I'm seeing dentist, but I don't know how that would apply. But it, it might as well be dentist, nurses, especially if you've handled some really heavy cases dealing with, you know, abuse or. Or something traumatic happened for you at work that you can't like unsee something. I feel like you're carrying that with you as well. So having a session with a therapist to talk it out, flush it out, and then release that energy is going to be very good for you. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, and I hope that resonates with you who are watching this, so that you know what you need to do. Okay.、Um, one last thing: long-awaited dream is coming. The star indicates a wish card. And this is a card about waiting, waiting for a really long time for an opportunity to come in. So they're saying a long-awaited dream is going to be in the works for you. Okay, so this is overall card about success. Okay, having dominion over your territory, kind of like being on that hill, looking,、um, looking down at everything that's happening around you. Meaning you take ownership or you have ownership over your domain. So I feel like things are going to really stabilize for you. It's going to require a lot of hard work when this thing comes in. And for some of you, it could be a job. For others, it's a major, big breakthrough in your creative endeavors. Like like for singers, actors, models, publishers too. And I feel writers. If you're waiting on publishing opportunities, this is what's going to come in for you. It requires a lot of hard work, but you've made it. Okay. So I'm gonna go into your love reading and see what's in store for you guys. So Gemini's, I'm actually、um, 
really happy to see that for you. Just make sure you do that spiritual healing if it applies to you. So let's see here. Love, romance, relationships for Geminis. So first off, let me give you guys a little bit of advice when it comes to dating. Because this is something that some some people around you have told you. And they're just like, you should do this, you should do that. And you're just like, no, I'm going to do whatever I want. But this is something that I feel needs to be reiterated. So maybe it will help, okay? Um, this is your energy here, the Queen of Swords. And this, you, you could be male or female watching this. It doesn't matter. This is a card about, you know, overall truthful communication, truthful representation. So this is kind of like the split personality card, okay? So you can see right down the middle of her head, it's like a line. And her hair is different depending on the right side or the left side that you're looking at. So this is kind of like that um, Gemini energy running through you where you might say something that you don't mean when you're upset, for example. Or you say things to joke around, but the other person that you're dealing with or communicating with does not know that you're joking around. They think you're serious. Okay, so this is all about being very clear, very succinct, and very concise when we communicate so that we don't have communication problems so that the other person does not misunderstand us, okay? I also feel as well, a lot of you, um, it's kind of like blowing hot and cold with another person. So I feel like one day you're just like really, really affectionate. And then, then another day, if you're in a bad mood, you kind of shut down. So I feel like other people are seeing these different sides of you and they're just not really sure. It, on the one hand, it's very exciting because they're not sure what they're going to get. But on the other hand, it can be very emotionally taxing if you're different from one day to the next and they're not really sure which side of you they're going to get. So I feel like really looking at yourself from other people's perspective so that they understand, so that you have better self-awareness and you can, you know, understand how your words and your actions affect other people. Like when you're joking, do they know you're joking? And when you're not joking, when you're being serious, do they know you're being serious? And at the same time, because you, you want to, you know, look at the impact that you have on other people, you also want to think about the impact that they have on you. If they're doing something that you don't like, you need to be very clear and verbal about it. And don't be afraid of hurting their feelings. We can say things in a really firm way without being hurtful, right? So that is going to be really important. And I feel like a lot of people have told you this. Um, another thing that I want to mention as well is a lot of the times when you see something that you want, a person that you like, an object of, of your desire, you beeline it for that person. And I feel like it can come off in a way a little bit too aggressive and the other person is caught off guard and their instinct, especially if they're a little bit shyer or especially if they're a little bit more alpha and they want to make the first move, their instinct is to push you away. And so one advice that I feel coming through here, rather than behaving like this, we want to tone down our energy and behave like this, okay? This is the Nine of Cups, but the representation is somebody that allows other people to come to them, that allows other people to make the first move, that behaves in a little bit more of a, I, I, I want to say like demure way, where you rather than beelining for something you want to wait you want to observe you want to kind of like um wait for the other person to show their intentions wait to see if they're worth it wait to see how they present themselves and wait to see more of their courtesy their mannerism before you declare whether or not you want to be with them. So I feel like slowing down a little bit in your relationship sector, especially for those who are single, is going to be very crucial, okay? So once again, I pulled out another card just to see what the Nine of Cups is saying. And it's telling you as well to take your time, temper the different sides of yourself, make sure you're lined up, linked up, and your intentions are not fluctuating, okay? So it's sort of like making sure you yourself are very balanced, making sure you know exactly what you want, and then waiting for things to happen 
rather than pushing for a specific outcome, rushing too fast to fulfill an agenda. Okay, so that's really important for singles. Um, let me talk about other people. I have here the Two of Cups, and the Two of Cups is a kind of like a, a kindred type of a union that you have with another person. On the one hand, you know, I feel like this card overall it indicates a lot, a lot of um, not so much on the traditional right away deck, but I feel like in this deck it indicates a lot of chemistry. It's like two people staring at each other, and no one is like making a move, but there's a lot of chemistry here. It's like there's so much tension that you can cut it with the knife right so this is a card about having a lot of attraction for another person it can also denote like a very strong soulmate connection that you have with another person but there's also a lot of conflict a lot of not being able to see eye to eye and a lot of arguments your values are really really different and the communication between the two of you it seems almost as if one person is teasing the other one is just like very serious and then the teasing and the the seriousness gets out of control so i would say this is a love hate type of energy that you have with another person where when they're at their best and you're at your best you love each other and when you know, it's like things can turn very quickly on a uh, on a dime, and then you both end up kind of in a tangled up in an argument really fast. Okay, so I feel like you're still involved with this person, and the person is showing up here in the present situation. We have here the sun, and we have here the Knight of Cups. So. The sun basically indicates a person that really inspires you. They're very creative, they're very bold, and they make a lot of uh, traction in the world. So they might be in a very public environment. So like they, they might be in the public eye, they deal with a lot of people, and they're also, you know, um, very career oriented, very serious minded. We have here the Knight of Cups, and I feel like for this situation, for this, uh, the sake of this reading, I feel that this is somebody that has, you know, made an offer to you. And because the relationship might have been very conflictual, you're not really sure if you should move ahead and you're not really sure if you can if there's stability in this relationship. You're not really sure if there's going to be stability in this relationship. So you might take them, you know, on a very superficial level like just dating but not able to take the relationship to the next step, not seeing them in a serious light. Crowning this reading is something that you're thinking about. And uh, I feel this is another person that you're thinking about. For some of you, it could be an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And, um, or this can be a really, really smart, insightful person that you can stay up all night talking to. And the fact that it shows up here as the knight and the king, it basically means they are very consistent. They're very unchanging. And you've known them, you know, since it's almost like you grew up with them. You've known them for a really long time. You know them inside and out. And through the span of time, the length of time that you've known them, you've known them to be very smart, very wise, and very, very consistent. And I feel like in the past, they might have been really impulsive, but right now they're tempered and they're waiting for things to come to them. And so if that's the person that you're dealing with, it would explain so much why it wouldn't be good for you to rush ahead. It's, it's telling you to, you know, hold back a little bit, okay? So you're thinking about this person that you've known for a really long time, and they're telling you if this person is coming back in with a love offer, slow it down a little bit. Okay, because you've already known them for such a long length of time. You know how to push each other's buttons. And especially if this is somebody coming back in from the past. Um, it feels to me as if some of you might have children with this person. Some of you might have children with this person. And you're also not really sure how to work together as well. So I feel like you might have a new love. And you have children with a previous person. And so the new love, you're careful about it because not only are they supposed to be, you know, your lover, they're also going to be like the father or the mother of your child. So you might be really cautious about how to make this relationship work. So coming through in your future position, we have here the king of coins 
and the Ace of Wands. And I'm sensing for some of you, you have offers, you're out dating, and you have people that you like, but there's a lot of conflict here, and you feel like they might not even be emotionally mature enough based on where they're at. And I, I mentioned before, you're scrapping away people in your life that are not serving their purpose in your life. And so moving forward, this is a card overall about meeting somebody new or solidifying a relationship with a person. So we have here the Mr. or Mrs. Right card. This is the King of Pentacles, somebody who is consistent, somebody who is able to give you, you know, that stability that you're hoping for. And we have as well the Ace of Wands, which is a lot of chemistry, a lot of attraction. So in the past, I feel like a lot of you might find this person a little bit boring. Okay, so this is an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And you might not have dated somebody like this in the past, mainly because they're too, they're too buttoned up. They're too stifling. But in this present moment in time, you appreciate what they bring to the table. You appreciate their thoughtfulness. You appreciate, you know, the, the fact that they're able to compartmentalize, itemize, and get things done. And I do see this person coming through with a lot of gifts, flowers, candy, trinkets, you know, like um, they do a lot of little gestures for you. And I feel like you're starting, your eyes are open and you're starting to see that, wow, this is a really good relationship partner. Why have I spent, you know, the last 20, 30 years looking for these people when this person has been there the whole time. So you have somebody coming through for you, um, especially for singles. If you haven't had much luck dating, I feel this is the month in which, you know, an emotionally rewarding relationship is on the offer for you. And then for others, still dealing with exes and things like that. I feel this is the first time that I'm feeling this, but I feel like some exes coming back into the picture especially if they are an, uh, an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, or an earth sign, Cap uh, I'm sorry, uh, Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces, they might be in the right frame of mind for you to give them another chance. And trust me, I don't say that with exes, but I feel like they're coming back in and it might be a good time for you to revisit that, that situation. If you do that, it can be really good for you, assuming that, you know, um, assuming that there's no infidelity and things like that, just conflict of interest and just, you know, lack of agreement. Okay. So I hope the reading has been helpful for you guys and I'll be back for the mid month reading. Take care. Bye-bye.